Um, one thing I wanted to talk to you about was I always do like research before I bring somebody on. I was looking at your Instagram and you're doing these crazy dunks and you're in great shape. One thing I'm noticing is people are, you're having some haters pop up saying, Oh, that was a, that was a, Oh, look at this. This is an eight foot rim. And I, I even comment on the one saying, okay, I'd like to see you stand between him and the eight foot rim. And then let's see what happens here. <laughs> no, this is crazy. <laughs> I find it fascinating how people are so willing to tear down somebody that's obviously doing something. But if, for example, I've got one of these cold tubs back here. So I get these ads for cold tubs all the time. And these things are so, these ads are so obviously fake, right? You'll see this tub outside in like Miami and it'll be some girl getting into it. And it's obviously warm water. I seen one, there was no water in it. Right. But of course she had to bend over completely before getting in, which I get it. <laughs> For men, I, I understand the marketing, but nobody will tear that down, but they'll tear, you know, it's fascinating. So I, I wondered how you, how do you, how do you prefer to deal with that stuff? The haters. So, so my take on the haters, that's a great question. My take on the haters comes from my father's teachings on how he dealt with the haters. I was intrigued with my dad's baseball career because he was one of my first heroes because I would, I would see him and say, hey, that's my dad. He's throwing a baseball and so that. So then when I got to talk to him, some of my first conversations probably weren't the ones you're going to expect. Here's an example. My mama would bring me to every game she could. And a lot of those games, we'd be sitting with the players, wives, and families. Well, wouldn't you know, there'd probably be several thousand other people watching that game, having alcoholic refreshments, not really thinking about the families and the children who aren't having the same refreshments and aren't thinking with the same perspective. So when things are said like, hey, Lamanchek, you suck, <laughs> times 100, the little kid who's one, two, three, four, you know, is going to listen and repeat. So at the end of a game, and I'm not quite sure what game this – my dad definitely would know, but I, I'm going to get back to you on that one. That's going to be a funny story. But at the end of this game, we go down the tunnel, and I remember I was probably two. And from the looks of it, it seemed like Exhibition Stadium now that I'm thinking about it. But anyway, I said, uh, hi, Dad. And, he, you know, he sees my mom. He gives her a hug, give her a kiss. They have, like, a, an extended hug. And I'm just like, Dad, and I'm, like, pulling at his arm. I'm like trying to get him because remember, he's like six foot six. I'm, like, I'm just a little small fry. I'm like, dad, come on, dad, dad, dad. Finally, he's like, you know, what's up? And I'm like, do you suck? <laughs> and at that point, he looked at my mom. He goes, Joni, you, you can't bring him here anymore. It's, <laughs> it, it's too much. So, at that point, you know, I go home, whatever, life goes on. And, and that was the first lesson is, okay, get out of the environment. But what if you can't get in the environment? What if you're the person, right? So I start going through his clips. Like my mom made him a scrapbook of all these things. And I'm going through pages and pages and pages and pages. And it's such a fascinating thing when you get to read about all these experiences. So I said, hey, man. Did you ever read some of the stuff they wrote about you? He goes, no, not one thing. And I'm like, wait, what? He goes, no, nah, man, you're the only, I didn't read it. Your mama read it. I don't, yeah, Matt read it, my brother, but I'm not, I'm not interested in that. And I'm like, why? He said, for a little bit, I paid attention to that. <clears throat> and I had the worst year of my life. And that was 1978. And when I stopped paying attention to what everyone thought about me, when I stopped paying attention to what everyone felt about me, and then I just got back to me, you know, I got myself on the right path. So I use that. Now, what I did to kind of make it my own is my faith is my strongest thing. All right. So for me, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is always going to be the pinnacle and the foundation for me. So no matter what anybody says, the the lives have already been paid in blood. I'm here to draw attention to myself 
with an elite athletic skill that's been given to me by God so I can lead people to God. Period. End of story. Say what you want. You got a problem with me? Just like David Goggins says, take a ticket, stand in line. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> like I went through hell. I came back only because God allowed me to so I can show some stuff still great. Bottom line is the inspiration's here because I have to lead people to God. It's why I'm chosen. It's why I have to do this. I don't get paid to do this, but my soul is here for me to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like the two existences that we have. People talk about purpose. It's not how we make our money. Purpose is how we intend to live our lives through God's divine plan. So all of this stems from your question of how do I handle the haters? It's by understanding my minuscule role in God's plan in being a servant of the word of God and trying to do the best I can to live out my purpose without as many errors as I know there's going to be. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I just try to have fun with it. And uh, for me, uh, I got my block list is tremendous, brother. It is. I give people like one or two shots to really get it right, and they're not getting it right. <laughs> block, block, and, and it's just better off that way because, listen, I'm not, I don't want to be like, look at me and that kind of thing. I just want to help who I can help. And if you're on board with a real person who has an open heart, and I've been through some stuff that most people hopefully never have to go through, but if they <laughs> have to, maybe it's a lifeline for them. That would be cool. Because then I'm paying it forward and living out purpose. You know, for me not to do that and for me to get caught up in the shenanigans, that would be that would be a real fail. You know, I can't get upset at people because they're jealous of a skill that they don't have. Yeah. They just haven't figured out how to appreciate anything. You know Gordon Ramsay, the chef? Uh-huh. Yep. I'm like relatively naive to a lot of things, brother. I don't watch TV. So I actually just found out who this guy is. And he's like super famous. And it's like, you don't know who he is? I'm like, dude, no, I just found out. So I'm watching a reel and it's him making scrambled eggs. So all of a sudden I'm like, wow, this is a world famous chef and he's making scrambled eggs. I definitely got to watch, you know, other people might scroll through, but I know that he's probably the best chef there is. He presents darn well. Let me watch what he's got to do. Yeah. He, he taught me an incredible lesson on scrambled eggs. Let me tell you, man, whoever I make that dish for, I'm not telling him it was Gordon Ramsay right away, but I'm going to take a little credit and then I'm going to give Gordon Ramsay some credit. But when you have somebody who does something well, it's just important to appreciate. It. Yeah. And, um, and that's kind of what it is. It's learning to appreciate. That goes back into having a connection with the divine because then you understand how to appreciate. You know, like if I had a kid in my class growing up and, do you remember having a kid in your in your class, let's say fifth grade, who was like a really good athlete? Do you remember? Sure, absolutely. Right? And like all of us would look at that kid and, and want to like do just like that kid mm -hmm. because that's a great thing. And as we age, we see greatness and we appreciate greatness. But sometimes things happen and it usually is from the home and a lack of structure with belief and, and culture and bringing things together and having God and praying and repenting and just living that out, that they lose touch with the appreciation and then it becomes a jealousy and then, and then a hater troll game. But that